Hey, Tim. How are you? Hey, Mike. I'm doing fine. How about yourself? Living the dream, like all of us. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> That's my standard answer. Um, so, uh, Tim called me this morning and he wanted to go over where we are because we did it a week ago and we felt we owed you guys uh, an update of where we're at and what's good, what's bad. Um, well, most of it's pretty good. We're getting there. Yeah. And, of course, we have seriously a concern about... Uh, Hey, well, I have my Maestro first WPX this weekend. Um, so I'm going to put up a screen here first that uh, Tim and I quickly talked about. And I posted this on the community this morning. Um, if you don't want to watch the whole broadcast, this tells the whole story. But essentially, uh, hi, Pat. Uh, essentially, so what works? Smart SDR for Windows works. Smart SDR for Mac. Dog Park SDR. All these work on SmartLink. No problem. A Maestro does not work on smart link and uh, an m model will work as the receiving end of smart link if you update it from a pc if you just assume it's not an m model i guess is the easy way to describe it yeah if you put a piece of tape over the front and and i know i you know we're sort of joking at that at just describing it believe me we're not joking about it it's uh trying to make an easy way to explain it anything else uh uh, and the basics. No, I, th I think that's that's pretty well status quo. Right. I mean, I mean, we we did um, we did release um, the Smart SDR for Windows version uh, a little early last week after our conversation that uh, that that Mike and I had. We uh, the team gathered together and uh, we made an assessment. And we did went ahead and uh, and did the release of the software. And uh, in general, uh, we've gotten some some really good feedback from it. Um, one, it fixed the problem, which is paramount. Uh, but two, um, and it's something that we kind of sort of figured would happen, but we didn't want to say anything until we had proof, is that uh, we, we immediately started getting reports from people um, that were operating on SmartLink that says, hey, what did you do? My latency has decreased by anywhere between 100 and 150 percent uh on the uh on the smart link connection and uh milliseconds actually so it's yeah. more than that it well from, i was gonna say from, I, I yeah. was gonna say we we've we've seen uh we've seen reports of going from 250 milliseconds to less than 100 so uh um, yeah i went from i had to come home i went from 115 to 130 to like 30. And uh, hi, Arnie. Uh, the Mac versions work fine. You don't have to. You uh, there's no issue with Mac versions. Yeah. So uh, yeah, so, and we, we we heard this right away, but we okay. We're gonna wait. We're not gonna say anything out loud till we hear it from more people, right? Right. And and yeah. we did so. so. So that we got into a bit of a catch twenty two, right? So we yeah we with .dot net we decided to stay stable, much like we still have users trying to use XP and not being bleeding edge, and we got behind the eight ball a little bit. Yeah. So, um, so, the, the, so, like I said, the good news is the uh, the smart SDR for Windows release came out. We're getting really good positive feedback from it. Uh, the The good news for Maestro users is that the same code that we are testing in the field, or not testing, but running in the field now, is the exact same code that's going to be running on your Maestro, and um, and so that's going to compress our uh, what normally would be our um, our alpha period of testing, uh, because it's already being tested uh, right. in a in a very big way, and so um, so that that's what that's one of the reasons why we wanted to get it out. The other reason is that um, uh, we had it ready, and uh, and we 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 were we were pretty happy with the stability of it, and um, it, you know we normally don't want to push out a, a release on late Thursday or a Friday. Uh, but you know we've we've broken so many paradigms here lately. You figure, hey, what's another one? Yeah, so right. Well, <laughs> and that we wanted to, Tim and I discussed about going through the life cycle of a, of, a, of any problem. So we've we've the first part is yeah. identifying there's a problem. Uh, that's the symptom. Okay, what you know? And I'm gonna. You've probably seen me on Facebook said three flashing red lights doesn't mean the SD card is bad. And the odds are it probably is, but that's just the symptom, like a cough. Right. Right. You don't know what you have. Then you have to identify the root cause. That's often a hard part, which we did that pretty quickly. Uh, so we've got that. And then we get it working in the lab. And that worked out pretty quickly in a few days on the smart SDR version. Uh, even even on the Maestro version, we're pretty close. We had it fixed. But the next part 
is where it's the <laughs> long part, right? And Tim was going to talk about the, the, the component that I think Dan hasn't slept in about a week. Because it's a lot of try. Well, some other people. Dan and Anna and, right, and, and Eric, the right. the whole team has been putting in a lot of lot of extra hours right. burning the midnight oil on this. Right. So, uh, Tim, do you want to go over the uh, the 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 what's required to get a fix out to a tablet sure. like a Meister or the yeah mm -hmm. uh, M model? So, um, so as as Mike said, you know, we pretty pretty quickly in the in this fix process, we, we identified what the root cause was. And the, and the root cause was is that the, the .NET libraries that we were using uh, in the software uh, did not properly support the, the new TLS 1.3 version. And so we had to do a, a .NET upgrade. And on, on a Windows PC, that's a, that's a fairly straightforward process. You know, you, uh, you, you go find, you know, you go find the update, uh, you load the update. Um, uh, Windows installs some software on your PC that goes and, and checks to see what you actually need, and then goes and downloads the uh, the software from the internet and does an update. Um, sometimes before you install a .NET update, though, um, you have to have a minimum operating system version, uh, which requires the uh, the OS to be patched and have all the security patches and updates and all that stuff done to it too. And so, um, so what we, what we ran into with the, the Maestro and, um, and, and to a, a lesser degree, but the same thing with the, with the M model is that uh, these, these products use uh, three different kind of, of tablet computers um, for the display. And, uh, and they all use a, a different flavor of windows of embedded windows that, that it's running on it. And they all have uh, different processors, and they all have, uh, you know, different amounts of memory uh, and things of that nature. And so um, in the process of working this, you know, we have to have a, and we, well, the, the other thing that we do, too, is that um, is, is a long time ago, we, we made a decision to utilize what's called a, an integrated installer. And so we have one installer or one piece of software that installs lots of different components of software on lots of different pieces of hardware. And, uh, and we did this primarily so that the user uh, doesn't really have to think <laughs> too much about what, what they need to do when they upgrade. For example, you know, um, you, know you don't have to say, well, I've got a, a 6300 that, you know, that's got this FPGA and this DSP processor, and then I'm using it with a Maestro. With, with, is it a Maestro an A or is it a B? And you know, and, and figure out all of this, and then download the right software combination to make everything work. We we do all of that magic in the background for you. And so, um, so one of the things that we had to do to make the Maestro and the M model work is we had to make the integrated installer for those products operate so that we could properly install all the .NET and, and patch OS patches that we needed for three different pieces of hardware. And, um, and so that's taken a little bit of, um, that's, that's been a little bit of a challenge because, um, you know, the, the, the tablets do not have uh, unlimited amount of storage and, and memory like a, a PC does. So, um, so we have to, we have to figure out on each particular platform what is the prerequisite requirement for, for loading .NET, download those updates, install them. Uh, it's Windows, so there's got to be a, a reboot involved. Uh, and then turn around and install, you know, the next round of updates um, and prerequisite software and then do another reboot. And then hopefully after we go through that process a couple of times, we're ready to do the .NET installation. And so that's what we have been working on for the last week is to, to make sure that would, that would work properly. And I, I think it was last week in our, um, in our conversation, you know, they were asking, you know, will it be next week? Will it be the week after next? And I, I made the comment, we, there's still things that we, that we don't know that we don't know. Uh, the good thing is, is that right now, everything that we didn't know um, last week, we know today. Uh, so it's just the process of, of getting this stuff in. So uh, where are we in, in, in this process? 
So, uh, hey Tim, where Tim, where are we in this process? <laughs> so, uh, so um, uh, early yesterday morning, uh, a uh, a a development fix came out that uh, that both um, Ken and myself downloaded on our Maestro Bs, and um, and so we both ran the installation on a, on essentially a production Maestro. Uh, the updates ran successfully. Um, we didn't have any problems with that. Uh, we were able to update the firmware in um, our um, respective radios. And then uh, I started a, a smart link session with Ken's radio and Ken started a smart link session with my radio. And uh, as of nine o'clock this morning, they had been running for 24 hours straight without a single failure. So, um, so we are very confident that the fix that we have implemented uh, is the right one. And that's part of the life cycle that Mike was talking about is that, you know, you gotta, you gotta find root cause and then, you know, understand the fix and then deploy the fix. And, and we're, we're basically there. Uh, there's a little bit of cleanup that we're still doing. Uh, one of the things that, um, that we're, we're, that's going to be a, a, a bit of a challenge with this release and it, and it's going to be hardware platform dependent is the amount of time it's going to take to upgrade a maestro. And so um, when Ken and I were doing the, uh, the, the initial test last night, uh, we did uh, essentially kind of a worst case scenario. Um, because the, the devices are going to download a lot of software for doing the updates, uh, we both used a Wi-Fi connection uh, on our maestros. And, um, and even with a wired connection, it, it takes a while. <laughs> But Tim knows uh, how I feel about Wi-Fi, yeah, but it was done on, it was done with a reason it, you it, were looking to cause. We wanted to see, we wanted yeah. to see the worst case scenario. Yeah. Um, and so, uh, for, for the Maestro B, um, the update's going to take a little while. It's going to be one of these, uh, turn it on and, uh, you know, go out, wash the car, cut the grass, uh, and everything, come back in and check on it kind of thing. Um, it took, um, it took a little under three hours. Uh, to run on my Maestro, it took a little under two and a half hours on Ken's. So we're we're expecting, you know, a, a, you know, anywhere between a, a two to four hour update. Now, part of this is dependent on the speed of your internet connection. Um, both Ken and I have fairly fast internet connections, but you know, if you if you do have a, a, a slower internet connection, it will increase the time that it takes to do the updates. Um, the other thing Th those that, were both on bees right these are all maestro bees now the maestro yeah. a updates a little bit faster and the m model uh radios update much faster uh within you know 10 15 minutes at the most so so that's um so that's going to be a little bit different you know that's than than the normal upgrade which you know usually takes five or ten minutes to do uh, one of the other things that we've we found too is that um Depending on the version of software you're updating from um, will determine whether you have a unattended un install or an attended install. And, uh, and what I mean by that is that um, uh, when we do the operating system updates, we go through three phases of it. And, um, and if you're updating from an older version, 312, 3112 or later, um, you're going to, you're going to have to, on the Maestro, uh, after it reboots, you're going to have to reselect your radio and tell it to connect so that the update process, um, uh, starts executing stage two. And then when stage two is done, you have to do the same thing for stage three. Um, now if you have a, one of the newer, uh, 3.2 versions already installed on your Maestro, that has an auto restart feature that we, uh, that we added. And if you're at that version upgrading, then it's completely unattended. You can turn it on and literally, you know, walk away and come back a couple of hours later and it'd be done. And, and we'll document all of this, uh, you know, in the release notes and, uh, and we'll probably have another one of our uh, little back porch sessions here and, uh, and, and talk a, a little bit more about that once we get ready. But um, so from a status standpoint, uh, things are looking really good. We're putting the final touches on everything. Um, we in, we fully intend the software to go to our alpha team uh, before the Memorial Day weekend and give them an opportunity to test through the weekend and uh, 
and then a little bit afterwards, and then we'll get together early part of next week, review the uh, the feedback that comes from the alpha team, and uh, we'll either uh, make some changes and uh, and rerun another alpha process, or uh, we're going to give it a, a gold stamp, and uh, we'll package it up in a release and get it out to you as quickly as possible. Um, but the one key thing is, is that, you know, we've, we've done a lot of work on this, um, uh, and, and, you know, I, and I, I, I'm not, I don't want to trivialize any of this. The, the, the engineering team has been working incredibly hard trying to make this fit. Uh, Mike had a perfect example uh, of, of what we've been doing. Uh, if you've ever seen the mo movie Apollo 13, uh, you know, they had to figure out the, the correct sequence to turn the breakers back on uh, in the uh, in the crippled um, limbs so that they didn't uh, overtax their power budget and uh, and shut the computer down before reentry. And essentially, that's the kind of same thing we've been doing. We've been trying to figure out, OK, if we load these three patches first, will that get us to the point that we can load the next three patches and yeah. and, and going forward? So there's been a lot of trial and error and. You know, like I said, hats off to the the, the guys and gals. They've done a, a phenomenal job there. Yeah, the uh, testing was, by the way. So imagine, as Tim said, so you this takes two to three hours, and some of the uh, VMs actually tend to run a little slower. I think Dan was saying so, maybe a bit longer, and then it fails. Okay, you understand <laughs> the failure. You make your adjustments, re-image, spin off the, the recovery. You know, back up to where a customer would be. Wait another two or three hours. <laughs> You know, and uh, and try it again, and uh, and every time they were okay, it's good. We got over that hurdle. Oh, new hurdle. Oh, we got yeah. over that hurdle. New hurdle. And uh, uh, oh, do we want to see this screen? Another test. You know, so yeah. we keep it all. So it's going. So it's going to be plug it in, turn it on, because I'm not a Wi-Fi fan, as you know. <laughs> plug it in somewhere. Carry it over to the switch. Yeah. Just be, eliminate any possible failure you can type of thing. Yeah. Uh, plug it in, maybe plug it into a UPS. And some of the stuff we can't test either are, you know, we, we, we consider, okay, how can we make it really fail bad where you have to, as Tim said earlier, right. put it in a box and send it home. And believe me, we don't want that for anybody or even us. Yeah. And right? that's, so. and that's kind of where we are right today is that we're going through our, our process failure scenarios uh, to see if we, if we break it, at this critical point in the process, you know, does it automatically recover? If it doesn't automatically recover, write some code, make it automatically recover. Um, right. But the, 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 Mike brought up a really good point, you know, to, to, with this particular update, it's, it's going to be critical that the platform is stable. And that means plugging the, the Maestro into DC power. Do not use the battery bank on the back of the Maestro because you do not want the power to go out in the middle of this thing because it will potentially get you to the point where you got to start all over again. So, you know, plug the DC power in. Uh, if you've got a spare Ethernet cable to plug into your switch, plug the Ethernet connection into the Maestro so it's got a, a good, solid uh, network connection, and, uh, and that will give you the best recipe for success. Okay, we have some questions here. So, Roy, Rory, I'll post it, said, uh, no way to do a standalone installer. Well, this is sort of what we've done. Um, but it's nice background noise, Tim. It's a collection of these. Utilities You're going to hear some we've... barks here in a second. Which you uh, scripted. <laughs> yeah, the a, a squirrel came down out of the tree, so my yeah. uh, my, my 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 squirrel eradication unit had to go get it. <laughs> yeah, no, and th there he goes. And this, by the way, is not a green screen. It's reality. So yeah. So uh, so this, yeah, this was not quite so simple, uh, Rory. Um, I think Tim, can you see these? Will there be another yeah. version for M models? Yes. Well, uh, for the M model, it'll be a it'll be a three dot two dot something greater than thirty seven, and for um, for the for the two versions, it'll be a two dot seven dot something greater than two seven five. Right. Uh, right. And, then and r right now, we don't really know what the number is going to be because that our alpha testing really depends determines the the final version numbers. Right. And everybody can come up to that level after, right? So if you're already yeah, running yeah. Smart Industry, we actually want you to come to that we level. We want you to come to that level, right. yes. We want everybody to okay. get on the same, get synced up. Okay, I'll answer this one. So um, this is not related to anything that's going on, but the A model was the first one that was built, the B models uh, where we're at today. And uh, really, there's uh, they're identical to be, you know, it's a different tablet. 
And by the way, Windows tablets on uh, embedded devices are incredibly common, whether it's in the healthcare, the airline industry, manufacturing, it's, it's a very common development tool delivery platform uh, that Windows um, that Microsoft builds. So they're not that uncommon. Uh, yeah. the, if you've got one in your hand, you can't tell. The B model has its power button on the side, and the A model has its power button on the top. It's yep. just a different. We went to a different tablet. Power button was in a different place, so we had to move it. The other thing I'm going to say here is uh, the LAN connector does not function if you're on battery. Purposely. Right? Purposely. <laughs> it's disabled if you're on battery because we feel that if you've got to plug a cable in it, you're probably near an outlet. So... Uh, okay, we're going to do one got? plug. Might as well do two. I missed the description of the problem. Okay, guy, uh, Guy, is it Guy or Guy? Oh, we'll come back yeah. to you in a minute. Well, I was going to say <laughs> oh, go a ahead. quick one. Uh, you can't log on to SmartLink. Okay. And what else we got? Uh, here's one from Pat. I'm still at 3.1.12, so please have the documentation include notes for those that have not jumped to 3.2. Of course, we do that for every set of release notes. So, uh, Make sure you re you read them uh, before you uh, you update. Okay. Um, da, 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 I think that's it. Uh, yes. No. My Jersey's Toronto Maple Leafs game five, game four. If they win tonight, they go yep. through. So yes, I'm an NHL hockey fan. And I'm I'm Schrodinger's cat. So <laughs> He's Schrodinger's cat. It is not dead or alive. Yeah. All right. Uh, any other questions? Please make make it poe. Yeah, Rory, that's a great idea. Uh, I'll be blunt. It's not going to happen. <laughs> yeah. The the the, pro, the 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 issue is is the power budget's uh, probably too high. Uh, yeah, if you get a lot of ideas. I actually got onto a diatribe on Facebook today. For that, I apologize if I annoyed anybody. But I, you know, I've been here hmm, four years now, five, four. For, it seems like an eternity. I can honestly say that, uh, as I said in my Facebook post, and I don't think Tim had a chance to read it that. We, you know, we all care. We really do. We feel your pain. Um, uh, you, um, we should invite people to one of the calls Tim's on because Tim, Tim really feels your pain. And yeah. He's really good at actually thinking uh, on how it's going to impact the customer base uh, and, and you people. And actually everybody does, but uh, Tim's incredibly passionate. I am as well, probably because we get to talk to a lot of you. Uh, if you ever have any ideas you want to share with us, you can just email them. Uh, don't post them on Facebook because uh, it's a hit or miss. Uh, but you can always well, we, email we, us. This is what's it. We we have a an idea category in the community. That's the best that, place. That that too. Yeah. Yep. Uh, or if you have any extra questions, I'll see if I can post this banner. Look at that. You can also email us. I answer these, so they come to me and JP and my boss Lori. And I uh, I think that's it. Was there one more question? Tim is great. Oh, I Thank, knew you. That. Thank you. Thank uh, you. Tell my wife. So <laughs> tell your wife. Dog no, thinks I, so too. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. I if you don't read that, I'm not going to post this. If you don't, okay. Well, because this guy gets to be anonymous because he didn't follow the homework on how to get your name. But I'm going to go look and see who it if is. If you don't read the release note, you, then you deserve what happens to you. Yeah. We we try to actually make sure you don't have to read the release notes, to be yeah. honest, right? We really yes. do. And, but uh, it's always the best practice. Uh, you don't want any gotchas. So, uh, and I guess that sometimes we sort of joke around, but it's uh, it's just tongue-in-cheek and like if we were sitting at a dinner table. Yeah. Well, Tim, I think that's it. Oh, I got my Radio Sport headset on. These are the light ones for the. They plug right into my iPad for Smart SDR for iOS. Yeah. They actually sound really good. When I gotta yeah. do a little commercial for Dave uh, Bottom from uh, my pictures backwards, um, made these. He put full range drivers in the headset. So the first four or five he made, he gave one to his wife to try out. He never got it back because she'd use it to watch Netflix on because they sounded so good. Uh, and. Um, Really nice cable, and you know one thing. And we have a whole show on this. He, this cable is actually made, so it's odd. It's not a, a quarter wave of anything. RFI issues. So Dave's cables are not a random length by any means. Tim, I'll let you go get Jed. Yeah, uh, I was going to okay. say he was he was he was uh, back there digging a hole, so I had to get get his attention. Well, that's what he's for. Well, of course. Come here, bud. And um, Jed wants to say like hello. We, Come here. Oh my goodness. We got to turn around. 
Dave ah. makes an awesome product. Okay. And there's Jed. So, so there's uh, Jed. Jed says hello. And um, so as a reminder, what we started with, so Smart SDR for Works, everything works as long unless you're a remote Smart Link user. And uh, so Windows works, Smart SDR for Windows works, Smart SDR for iOS, Dog Park SDR all work over Smart Link. Maestro doesn't work. And M models will work on um, Smart Link, and this is going to sound confusing, if you don't think of it as an M model. And it doesn't have a display, <laughs> so you have to update it with a PC. Uh, it's a Radio Sport uh, headset, Brock. Uh, um, our land communications from them, or you can get them on our store as well. And um, uh, I lost my train of thought. Uh, so that all functions wonderfully. Yeah, for N1MM, uh, and uh, the, this weekend you're just going to have to rely on N1MM keying if you're remote. And I had something else I was going to say that was super critical about that. Have a safe and, Memorial uh, Day weekend. Have a good Memorial Day weekend. And because I'm in Canada, I get two Mondays off in a row. <laughs> <laughs> Lucky dog. <laughs> Lucky dog. And <laughs> um, I guess that's it. I think that's it. Oh, right. hang, the minute we stop, I'll think of it. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, 73, and uh, good luck in the contest if you're doing it. And I think the solar flux was starting to creep up this morning. Amazing. We were excited when it hit 88. But um, perfect. Go, right. Lisco. go. All See right. See you guys. 7 3. Bye, everyone. 7 3, <laughs> 7 -3 Jed. Jed can't hear me. Bye bye. <laughs>